While the stock market hits new highs, those in the bottom 50% sure don't see any of the benefit. With lower paying jobs and debt stacked on top of debt, it seems rather impossible for so many to create a solution to their problems. Some want their debt wiped away. Others want more funding for social assistance programs. With an insolvent government, it is becoming increasingly likely that either a major inflation will take place or government will simply cut these entitlements and programs. Either way, it's not a good sign. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about the real economy. We're going to look at the store closures. We are going to look at the actual debt. We're going to look at the jobs. We're going to look at the student debt and everything in between. I have a lot to cover and I want to get into it right away. This article out of Bloomberg is talking about the bottom 50% of consumers showing signs of weakness. This is typical. We've seen this many times before. Now UBS has done this particular survey and found the data to be accurate to all of those others that we have shown. You see, we always take a sample size, 2000 people here, 1000 there, 10,000 here, and then we bring it all together because these are different people, different parts of the country. This might be from all over the world and we get this data, piece it together together and start to formulate a consensus based on it. So when you look at one survey that doesn't really tell you anything, but when it starts matching up with all the others, then it is very telling. 40% of households surveyed by UBS reported credit problems. Non-mortgage debt like student loans seen boosting burdens. Of course, when you have this excessive amount of debt, high interest rates, it is a very big problem. You see, because people are taking on debt of all kinds. We see that today more than ever before. We have the credit cards, the student loans, we have the personal line of credits, we got the home equity line of credits and everything in between. This is a problem particularly for the bottom 50% because they are using services like their credit cards to borrow an increasingly larger amount of money and they're also using those payday advance cash loans and everything else and of course those have really high interest rates. Although we can see that interest rates are very, very low right now, that isn't the case for some of these that are particularly used by those on the lower end as the majority, because you know, even people who are making six figures and above, they are also using this type of debt, but they are able to, for example, tap into their home equity so they can steal from the future there, but in the short term, they're not affected by the interest rates so much. Lower income U.S. consumers are showing signs of weakness despite the strong market and if the economy enters a recession, any possible credit crunch could be material. That's according to UBS directly and I do think it's important to understand what that means. Of course, they are worried about lower income consumers that are unable to actually go ahead of where they were back during the financial crisis. We keep hearing all the time about things becoming more fantastic as time has gone on. Look at the stock market. It's at all time highs right now, but the majority of people today are not feeling the benefits of that. They also mentioned something very important here. They expect that the consumer credit cycle can extend. That means it can go on for longer, of course, certainly can. But a future downturn could be worse than the one seen in 2001 and 2002, thanks to subprime consumers growing debt loads, higher losses, and the growth of fragile non-bank lenders. All of these things we've talked about before all the time. It's really interesting to see how people are complacent to all the information that's available to them. You know, look at what happened during the financial crisis. It's not a secret. People made mistakes and yet they make them again and again. Borrowing binge. Rising student loan debt is burdening U.S. consumers. And you can see there one and a half trillion dollars worth. It is unbelievable to see how excessive this has become. And these people here, they are not be able to discharge this debt. They're not able to go into bankruptcy to get out of it. There is only a limited realistic ability to do so. The majority of that is being promised to be wiped away by one candidate or another 
another, but ultimately we have some serious headwinds in this regard. No rate relief. Consumers are still feeling the effects of rising rates on their loans. This is the Consumer Bank Credit Card Assessed Interest, 17% at this time. And if you're carrying $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, this starts to become a huge burden on you. And of course, it only compounds month after month. Just a couple quick points here further along in the article, they mentioned that there are problems with delinquencies. Many banks are tightening lending standards in response to an uptick on delinquencies on loans like credit cards. That's a big issue, although percentage wise, of course, it's still very low, but it's still important to watch this and look at the response from the banks. I don't think they're actually doing much in terms of their lending standards, but at least that's what they're saying. Household debt was a record $13.7 trillion in the first three months of 2019, and most of the post-crisis growth in obligations has come from non-mortgage debts like student loans that carry higher interest rates. Remember that very clearly. I need to move on. I just want to show you what's happening along with this here because it connects in with the next issue. While US GDP has grown along with total consumer debt levels, a growing share of GDP has gone to capital, not labor. And post-crisis income gains have been below average for the lower tier consumer. Another thing that is important to mention is the fact that we have seen over the years, decades, if you look at it, GDP growth is much slower than it was previously. Yet, there's been more stimulus coming out of the government. There has been more spending coming out of the government. We have witnessed the most excessive monetary easing policies that have ever happened in history. And yet, we're still getting less real growth. If you look at real GDP, that is is a measure that of course can be manipulated very easily but if you just take a look at that specifically and you see it over the decades we're getting less though we're putting more in that's a problem and you know that it cannot be fixed by applying the same principles we have for decades Really quickly, wanted to touch on this because it affects people at home. The retail apocalypse isn't showing any signs of slowing down. Six months into 2019, there already have been 20% more store closings announced than in all of 2018. I'm going to show you the data directly from CoreSight. They give us all the information. You can get it for free too. But I wanted to tell you that CoreSight estimates closures could reach 12,000 by the end of the year, far surpassing the record we have seen before. We are now on pace easily to be the record store closure year in history, more than last year, more than during the financial crisis, and so on. So this right here is CoreSight.com. If you ever want to know what's going on with the store closures, then I would suggest checking out CoreSight because they have this data available to you. You can get the snapshot like I'm showing you here for free. If you want the full reports, that's a more premium service. But hey, you can always check it out and week by week, they're giving us this data. So you should be paying attention. So far this year, US retailers have announced 7,062 store closures. And guess what? Don't worry, I'll mention it. 3,017 store openings, okay? So there are many more stores closing than are opening. And you will find oftentimes, as I mentioned it every single time, you see that store at the very corner. They are always opening and closing, opening and closing. So we have to watch how these statistics are reported because it seems to me that there are always these places that every month you pass by there's a new business there and it's just going to close down so this just tells us how often we see the same things happening when you look at this right now what kind of businesses are opening well we can see 1,000 of these store openings out of the 3,000 1,000 of them are dollar stores that's the plans for those and we can see the expansion of this as time goes on there's no doubt out about it and what is being done about it well look at this federal spending sets a record through June 3.3 trillion dollars worth and they cannot fix any of the issues that are present today 3.3 trillion dollars worth take a look at it in the chart form this just tells you how much they are willing to spend and what they are willing to actually spend money on here is the breakdown it gives you it here on the right hand side you could see that social security 
security being $780 billion. These are the outlays. And on the left hand side, you can see the receipts. Individual income taxes grows all the time. We are getting more money in and yet more money has to go out. So that's the way it works. The more money you bring in, the more that they have to send out. It can never actually fix any problem. But of course, here we are day after day trying to explain all of this nonsense. But this is it for you. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that like button because when you do so, it supports this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need, all the details from A to Z. Check it out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what's going on, you got to watch this video. Definitely click on it and I will see you there.